So I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna get started. It is, well, I'm saying straight up one o'clock central time where I am, but I believe a lot of you are Pacific time. So it's 11 a.m. I would say good afternoon, but good morning to all of you on this call who are here for the, the Youth Wildlife Conservation Experience. Obviously, I uh, would love to be, be with everyone in person, but this is the next best thing to being in person. And my name is Mark Horvitz. I work for Ducks Unlimited. Uh, I manage our youth and education programs for Ducks Unlimited. And we'll talk a little bit about that here in a little bit. I also have Justin Acock. Y'all probably can't see Justin. Uh, Justin is a, my partner in crime who, he covers the, the Atlantic Coast for Ducks Unlimited, works with our youth program. And what we're going to do is when we get towards the end of this presentation, we're going to open it up for some Q&A. So if y'all would be thinking about maybe some questions you might have about what we discuss. And Justin's going to help me kind of manage that chat function. And we'll run through as many of the questions as we possibly can. We've got about 20 minutes and obviously a lot to cover if we could. Um, but we're going to have to try to keep it to that to that 20 minute time frame. So, again, I, I appreciate all of y'all being on this call. I think it's awesome that you've got an interest in in conservation. You've got an interest in wildlife. And, and I do know that a lot of you, uh, a lot of you are from uh, from the, the Nevada area. I don't want to say Nevada. I've been corrected on that. And so I will talk about some of the things that Ducks Unlimited does in your specific state that's that's particular to your home region. Uh, like I said, I've been managing Ducks Unlimited's youth and education program for about seven, going on eight years now. And we'll talk about what we do as an organization with the youth program. But before we do that, I don't know how many of y'all, and it's hard doing this because I can't see your faces, but I don't know how many of y'all know what Ducks Unlimited is and what we do. So before I start telling you what we, what we do on an annual basis, I want to talk about, first of all, what we're not. And a lot of people, they, they see Ducks Unlimited and they recognize that Duckhead brand, which is really good because I think we've done a good job as an organization of branding that logo. But a lot of people think that, that Ducks Unlimited is a clothing company. We are not a clothing company, although we do have corporate partners like the shirt I'm wearing made by Drake Waterfowl that they'll put our Duckhead logo on there and it helps ultimately support our conservation mission, which we'll talk about. But we are not a clothing company. We don't, we don't guide waterfowl hunts. We don't sell Labrador retrievers or other hunting dogs, even though I love labs and have one myself and use it all the time. Uh, but that is not what Ducks Unlimited is. Essentially, Ducks Unlimited is a, we're a nonprofit organization. And our mission is to conserve, restore, and manage wetlands and other associated habitats across North America, primarily for waterfowl. And so if you had to ask me, you know, they, they'll, they'll tell you when you get maybe in college or even later on, give me your, your 30 second elevator speech on what you do. And you'll have to quickly tell someone, this is what my business is. I will tell you that Ducks Unlimited's business in one word is water. Um, we were founded by a group of concerned sportsmen back in, the 1930s during what we call the Dust Bowl era when, when the country was in a severe drought. And waterfowl hunters in particular saw the need for an organization like Ducks Unlimited to step up to the plate and provide the habitat needed for, for wintering uh, migratory waterfowl. And so since 1937, Ducks Unlimited has concerned, conserved over 15 million acres of wetland and associated habitat across North America, which is huge. And so some of y'all might be asking, well, why is conserving wetlands a priority for Ducks Unlimited? Why is water so important? Well, like I said, originally the, the founders of Ducks Unlimited looked at, at the problems that we were having with the lack of waterfowl uh, because of the, the issues we were having across the country with, with water. And I will tell you, just like just like us as humans, there are two things that, that waterfowl have to have. One is water, the other is food. And so the, the cool thing about waterfowl every year is their breeding grounds are up in uh, the northern part of the hemisphere around Canada, uh, the Dakotas. And every year as it starts to get cold, as their food sources start to get covered up with snow and ice, that, those waterfowl have to, have to migrate as far south as they can, what we call the wintering grounds, to survive, to be able to feed. 
to be able to have places to, to roost and to loaf. And so what Ducks Unlimited has done is said, we're not only going to ensure that the breeding grounds, which is what we call the prairie pothole region, is adequate and um, is sufficient for waterfowl to, to breed and to, and to reproduce, but we want to make sure that all of those different flyways that they take each, each winter, as they start to work their way south for protection from cold and from freezing rain and from sleet and snow, we want to make sure that those areas are also well suited for habitat for waterfowl to winter and to, to feed. So there are four different flyways. Most of you guys uh, in, in Nevada would be in the Pacific Flyway. We have the Central Flyway, then there's the Mississippi Flyway, and then the Atlantic Flyway, which is where Justin is. And um, so right now, uh, it's that time of year where birds are starting to migrate. They're starting to move down south. They're starting to get away from the winter and the cold in order to survive. And so that's why it's so important that Ducks Unlimited, that's why what we do is so important for waterfowl. Um, next is what kind of conservation work that we, that we do. One of them is restoring grasslands. Why is restoring grasslands so important? Grasslands are important because think about this, like the shirt I'm wearing, it's, it's camoed, it's camouflage. Um, Mama duck, as we call her, has to be able to camouflage herself from predators when she is sitting on her nest, hatching eggs. And so we restore grasslands to ensure that mama duck and all the other waterfowl have a place to securely nest and, and lay those eggs and protect them from other predators. Ducks Unlimited is, is, is really, really good at working in our prairie pothole region. Obviously that's one of our focuses. We also replant forests. Forests are, are, are important to waterfowl because during the wintering months especially, we have what's called flooded hardwood bottoms. Flooded hardwood bottoms are a place that ducks will go to for food, such as acorns and other invertebrates. And so that's, that's another way that Ducks Unlimited conserves and works with waterfowl. We also have what we call conservation easements. Conservation easements allows Ducks Unlimited to work with private landowners to take a piece of land that, you know, maybe it's a really good piece of habitat for waterfowl. And we want to ensure that that land is safe from any type of development in the future. So Ducks Unlimited will work with those private landowners to, uh, to form what we call a conservation easement so that that land is protected in perpetuity. Um, so those are just kind of some of the ways that Ducks Unlimited works to conserve, restore, and manage wetlands and other associated habitat. Um, and, you know, again, we work on a continental landscape, which means we work all the way from 50 states in the U.S. We work in Canada all the way down to Mexico because those birds, some birds like blue winged teal will migrate all the way from Canada all the way as far as south as Mexico. So some of y'all might be saying, well, well, why Nevada? You know, this we're one of the driest states in the country. Why is, why is it, why is waterfowl, why is wetlands important to us? Well, I will tell you that the Ruby Valley, for example, the Ruby Valley in Nevada is one of the highest areas of production for what we call the canvasback duck. And so because there is such a limited resource of water in the state of Nevada, it's even that much more important and critical for Ducks Unlimited to do our work that we have on the ground in Nevada, making sure that there's enough water, wintering uh, waterfowl in the state to be taken care of. So those are just some of the things that Ducks Unlimited does to, to conserve and restore and manage wetlands. We actually have a, a small, I guess a short video, if you will, that I'm gonna have Justin Q here that talks a little bit more about how what Ducks Unlimited does not only benefits waterfowl, but also people and other wildlife. So Justin, if you would cue that video. Wetlands are areas where the soil is covered by water for all or part of the year, and they're vital to wildlife and people. The amount and timing of water determines the kinds of plants, bugs, and animals that use the wetland. They make our water cleaner by filtering out pollutants. Wetlands also soak up water and release it more slowly. 
This benefits communities because heavy rain and runoff are absorbed into this natural reserve. In fact, just one acre of wetland area holds around 330,000 gallons of water. That's enough water for 12 households to use every single day. Without wetlands, cities may need expensive dams, levees, or complex filtering systems. And many communities depend on the economic boost from outdoor recreation that wetlands provide. Wetlands keep our land, people, and communities healthy and vibrant for the future. Protecting them is up to all of us. To learn more or to take action, visit ducks.org. Thank you, Justin. So now you can, you can see that was just a very, very short clip, but uh, you can see why water is, is our business at Ducks Unlimited. And yes, we're passionate about waterfowl and, and, and I love to get out and, and hunt with my friends and my family. But when you start to look at the big picture, um, what Ducks Unlimited does, again, is, is not just for, for ducks. It's for clean drinking water. It's for storm erosion like you just saw. It's for other wildlife, whether it be deer, or turkeys, um, you know, elk. And so I'm really proud of what we do. I love the mission of Ducks Unlimited. And so from my perspective and Justin's perspective within the youth and education program, which we started, um, I guess, formally promoting about eight, eight, nine years ago, we have the, the ability and the opportunity to work with what we call our green wing program. So that would be any of you that are under 12 years of age, so 11 and under, what we call our varsity program, which is ages 12 to 17, which I think some of you or most of y'all might be in. And then we have a college chapter program, um, which has been in existence since 1984. And really there, there's a couple of reasons why we do what we do. Number one, I was talking about this to my wife the other night, you know, they're not making any more land. And that's something that we cannot replicate. We cannot duplicate. So what we have is what we have. And again, I just I'm so encouraged by all of y'all being on this call because obviously you have an interest in conservation and outdoors. And so we have the, 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 the right, I guess, the call or the challenge to protect and conserve what we have. Um, we can put up strip centers. We can put up skyscrapers. Those things we can replicate, and duplicate and build. But they're not make, making any more land. And so Justin and I's job is to help teach individuals, young people, especially at that age range, the importance of conservation, the importance of leaving a legacy and leaving something better than you found it. So whether you play sports or, you know, you, you are a part of a, a Ducks Unlimited chapter, or maybe it's another conservation organization chapter, you have the opportunity to leave what you found better um, and to leave a legacy for yourself. And so that's that's one of the things that we love to do within the youth and education program. But one of the, the cool things that we get to do is we get to work with young leaders across the country to raise money for our conservation organization. So we've talked about what Ducks Unlimited does and why it's so important. But without money, you can't move dirt. We can't do the things that that I talked about in terms of replanting or replanting forests and, and grassland restoration. So. Ducks Unlimited relies solely and heavily on all what I call an army of volunteers. We've got over 55,000 volunteers across the country that help raise money to support our conservation organization. And so our high school chapter program, um, we have roughly 60 to 70 chapters across the country, and they help us raise money by putting on what we call dinner banquets, where we have people come, they will get a uh, you know, buffet style dinner. We have live auctions and silent auctions and games and prizes. And so those chapters alone help raise about a half a million dollars a year for our conservation organization. And then also our collegiate chapter program, um, which we have 180 chapters that have raised over $2 million for wetlands conservation. So if you're not in high school yet, if you're not in college yet, you can still get involved with the organization. We've had a lot of students that are in the sixth, seventh, eighth grade um, that, that, that know people that are in high school, that know high school students that have started chapters and they've helped volunteer and make those chapters stronger. You can go to Green Wing events, which are outdoor hands-on events, which is typically what this event is, where you can learn how to fly cast and shoot bows and train dogs and um, just hands-on experience. Uh, and that is going, and we're going to talk about where you can find more information when we start to wrap up. And so we're kind of running on the end of our time. 
So I'm going to stop right there. Justin does have one more quick video that he's going to show, and then we'll go into Q&A. Hey, still cling to those memories. Early mornings, the smell of coffee, fresh starts, time with each other, and a friend or two. spent exploring the outdoors, learning about conservation, bonding with friends, really time spent together. My father used to say, time together is all we have. I didn't know what he meant, but I knew I believed it. As I grew, I knew that it would be important to teach the lessons I had learned from my childhood to my children. Lessons in honesty, integrity, and hard work. Who wrote the history of time, and what part in it do we play? How do I conquer the invincible mountains, or calm one broken heart? Lessons that taught me the beauty of the world around me, and the need to protect and conserve it. Learning to act today for the benefit of those tomorrow. Lessons I'd never forget in settings that were unforgettable. And I know they'll teach it to my grandkids. What's your lesson? All right, Justin, thank you for showing those. And I don't I don't really know the the best way to do this for the QA. So I'm just going to start with the with the first question that came through. Um, Justin, you might want to try to help me with some of these if we can, as we're short on time, but let's see, Benny asked, what, uh, what kind of dog do you hunt with? Um, <laughs> it's a good question. I hunt with a black lab. His name is Drake. Um, and I believe that, uh, Drake is about seven years old. So love black labs, but there's a lot of, a lot of different good, a lot of different waterfowl hunting dogs, retriever dogs that you can hunt with, but I'm a lab guy. Um, what is the most common waterfowl? In Nevada, in Nevada, almost said Nevada. Um, I, I'm going to probably say the canvas back just because I talked about the Ruby Valley as being one of the most productive production grounds or reproductive grounds for that type of species of waterfowl. So I'm going to say canvas back. Uh, let's see, how old are you? How old do you have to be to join Ducks Unlimited as a volunteer? Um, you can join Ducks Unlimited as a volunteer at any age. I would say that the varsity chapter program, which starts at age 12, is a good place to start. But if you're younger than that, you can go to Green Wing events across the country. Uh, best thing to do would go to be go to ducks.org and you click on get involved and then youth programs. And that will tell you all you need to know as far as where events are. And uh, you can actually search events in your state through the ducks.org website and it'll tell you when events are coming up. Um, this is, do you guys help hurt birds? I don't know if it may have been hunt birds. Um, let's see, a couple questions. Is it legal to duck hunt? Yes, absolutely it's legal to duck hunt. Um, we, we have certain guidelines and restrictions and there's, of course, license fees and things of that nature that all go back into uh, conservation and, and how Ducks Unlimited actually uh, gets funding to do the work that we do. So that's kind of a broad question there. But, yes, absolutely legal to hunt ducks 
uh, and other species like deer and turkey and, and elk and dove. Um, let's see, Justin, you see any more? We, we had some other ones, Mark, and as you were going along, I answered those and sent them out to the group. There were things like, when did, why did we start in 1937? Um, and then things of that nature. Are we a fully volunteer organization? Where did the ducks migrate to and from? So all those answers went out direct as you were talking. Some of the stuff you covered as we were going along, but we went ahead and, and got some of those out to people so we could try to get all the questions answered before we got off because running up on our time limit. Yep, we're right at 120. Um, gosh, I wish we could we could do more Q and A. Um, Justin, thank you for answering as many of the questions as, as you did. While we wrap this up, I would just encourage all of y'all to go check out ducks.org for more information about youth programs, about how you can get involved if you want to volunteer. If you just want to become a member, that is, that is absolutely fantastic. We would love to help you with that. And I think it would be a life-changing experience for you. I know I've been a part of it. Justin has since we were young and uh, it's been a big part of our lives. So I wish we could answer all the questions, but I think we have to go because we're short on time unless Dawn or someone says we can extend it. Um, but I thank all of y'all for, for being on this call and for paying attention and, and being a part of the, the conservation experience uh, presented by the Wild Sheep Foundation. I think it's about fantastic what y'all are doing. So Dawn, I guess we're short on time and need to wrap it up. Okay, so we can do five more minutes. I think we can do five more minutes. Uh, let's see. So we'll just stay with questions. We got one here from Twi Tristan on why don't we buy land for uh, wildlife? It's one we haven't gotten covered. So why don't we buy land for wildlife? Um, well, I mean, we, I guess we really kind of do in some in some instances. So Ducks Unlimited, we work with private landowners. Um, we also work with uh, state agencies and we also work with uh, Department of Natural Resources to uh, do conservation easements, which we talked about earlier, whereas we deem a piece of property that is very beneficial to habitat for waterfowl habitat and for other for other species, we will put a conservation easement on it so that that land is protected forever, essentially what we call in perpetuity so that it can't be developed. Um, there's also uh, what we call wildlife management areas and things of that nature that have also been deemed a conservation easement for recreational use. So for you and I and Justin and Dawn and all these, everyone on this call, we could go to a wildlife management area and use it uh, to hunt uh, and other outdoor recreational opportunities. What else do we have, Justin? Let's see. How can we sign up for Ducks Unlimited? I think we answered that already. Mm -hmm. Right now, the easiest thing to do would probably be to go online. How many what? ducks can you hunt at once? <laughs> How many ducks can you hunt at once? Well, um, the way my season's been going this year, none. Um, I hunt in Arkansas. I mean, that would be considered the Mississippi Flyway. And typically this time of year, we get a lot of waterfowl migrating into Arkansas because of the, uh, the natural river system they have there that floods the, the hardwood bottoms. There's a lot of rice, ducks love rice. Uh, but so the limit, for example, where I hunt in Arkansas is six ducks uh, per hunt. And it's also based on species. For example, mallards, which are the predominant duck that I hunt in Arkansas, you can only shoot four. And then you can shoot two other birds, which could be maybe a gadwall or a wood duck or a teal. But Ducks Unlimited does not set the bag limits. We don't set the season limits. A lot of people think that we do. Um, we, we do not. We have a group of scientists and biologists and engineers that obviously may have some impact on those decisions because of our research that we do and the work that we do. But those are those are set at the state level and federal level. All right. What else? One question left, do we work in Canada or just the U.S.? That's a fantastic question. We work in both Canada and U.S. So originally when Ducks Unlimited was founded, we worked only in Canada. Canada is where the breeding grounds are. We talk about the prairie pothole region for the ducks, critical, critical wa uh, waterfowl habitat. But like we talked about earlier on this call, as we saw, ducks need that habitat all the way from Canada down to the Gulf of Mexico. So we started branching out and taking a continental approach uh, to our conservation mission. So we work in Canada, all 50 states, including Nevada, and as well as Mexico. 
And so we actually have Ducks Unlimited Inc., which is in the States. We have DU Canada, and we also have Ducks Unlimited de Mexico, which focuses their work in Mexico. So that's a great question. I think that might be it, Dawn. I think so. I think we should wrap it up. Thank you so much, Justin and Mark, for your guys' time yep. and your knowledge and your information. And that's it. Thank so, y'all. Thank you, guys. Yes, ma'am. Thank y'all.